And hey there, it's me, Mod Link, and welcome back to some more Andoran Saga. So last time, we started doing chapter... Set... I already forgot which chapter we're on, hang on. Chapter 6, sorry. Thought we were on chapter 7 now. No, chapter 6. And... It was actually kind of difficult with all the all the gargoyles in the back, and then fucking losing, and then... I ended up losing you a complete accident by just... <sighs> Whatever. Oh, you can't do anything. It's Ilanda and, uh... Yeah, it's Ilanda and the body man that, that can actually do something against that guy. See, so yeah, now we just have to finally complete this place. Complete the mission here, so it's just... He's body man here. Hmm, damn. Okay. Oh, uh, I have a Worm Slayer, so maybe that can... Oh, Victoria can get a fucking kill here. Hell yeah. <laughs> Should be skill luck defense. Mother... Victoria, man. <laughs> Awful fucking... Awful fucking level up there, yeah. Okay, your turn. Oh, no. This motherfucker hand axe. Not enough. I found, I found the exit. Everyone follow me. There you go, Buggy. You did something good here. Alright, we made it out alive, everyone. Never thought I'd miss Clear Sky so much. Come on, Bo. We all saw you eyeballing those spider gals. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't act like you weren't ready to pounce on them. Where'd we end up anyway? The path meandered a lot. Okay, just ignore me then. Doesn't bother me one bit. <clears throat> Young Master, we have a right at Timaya to Western Edge. It's a bit remote, but we can make our way to towards Tendarus. Tendarus, whatever. Where are we gonna find the man? This this route is somewhat indirect. We'd have a better we'd we'd have been better off going over the mountain than under it. The last thing we want is to run into another Timaitan regiment. Using those caves is our best method me best method for evading our foes. But Terra didn't hold back when they gave chase. Most of our horses have been run utterly ragged. I recommend we pause to take a well-deserved rest. Alright, we'll set up camp we'll set up a camp somewhere nearby. Giaki, take care of the horses, I'll gather the men. I'm on it, big boss bod. Please stop saying that. If the shoe fits. This is gonna be a guiding chapter already, I forgot. Meanwhile at Meanwhile at Castle Flame Guard. So you get the people here. Oh, is that is that Cassandra? Yep, yep. Oh, Brianna, where's mommy's little dove? Here I am, mother. There you are, sweet pea. Oh, as beautiful as ever. I adore your dress. Did that boy buy it for you? Yes, mother. We visited the Malthrak market last week. Excellent. How are you, I hope, uh, excellent. I hope you're making sure to keep him on a leash. Boys are stupid and you have to always keep them in line. Yes, of course, mother. Now, never mind that nonsense. Alvaro! Alvaro! Get up here! Well, there's something to say. He's in the dungeon again? Oh, pish tosh. You know Alvaro. Always playing with his toys. Hmm. The sore general there. Hello, mummy. Sister. Sorry for the delay. I had quite the mess on my hands today. A prisoner kept thrashing and screaming like a beaten dog. Nearly broke his restraints. Whether you're still covered in his blood. Hmm, but it does give me a distinct aroma, doesn't it? It does. Good heavens, look at how pale your skin has become, child. You need to step out of that dungeon once in a while. Sorry, mommy, just can't help myself. I always had such fun down there. I adore your childishness, Alvi. 
Everyone loves a playful boy. Now recording a few matters, you must you two must listen well. And these people are just fucking evil. What the fuck? Okay, so thank god I didn't talk to her then. Although I, I still kind of missed out on the silver sword, but you know, whatever. The next couple of months should prove interesting. Her work in the capital will soon bear fruit. Does that bag of bones fall into his grave yet, mummy? Yeah, last I heard, King Thorgrim was at death's door, love. He may even be dead by now. It's been a few weeks since our spies sent us a report. I expect Randall will become crown king by a month's end. Mother, will we at attend his crowning ceremony? Haha, <laughs> yes, naturally. I hate missing a show. Ceremonies are fun. I'll wear a nice dress. A delightful no boy will be able to take his eyes off you. Speaking of which, are you going to pay your lover a visit soon? You have to remember to keep the stupid boys under your thumb. Just like mother taught you. Must you insult him so? He's a good person. He's naive like all boys are. We need to have him on our side. Remind him of who is, who's in charge. And Alvi, mommy's precious. I need your help with something. Send me over anywhere so you pl as you, uh, anywhere you so please, mommy. Your son is always here to serve your bidding. Much smarter than your daddy. <laughs> I love it when a good boy knows his place. First, let us pause our business for a while. But let us serve our meal. Let's go eat and discuss the fun times ahead of us. Yes, mummy. Yes, mother. Okay. Oh, it is a guiding chapter. Okay. Well, it's perfect. I ended off where I did. Later that evening in the Emperor Mountains. Alright, we finally made it out of those damn caves. Somehow I didn't expect the underground to be so moist. Still got water sloshing about in my bloody boots. The whole army is my whole army is cold and hungry. I'll set up camp for the night. Maybe I should chat with the rest, or maybe I should go just go to bed. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Talk to everyone, obviously. Look at all these people here. Still can't talk to Thea, but at least we can talk to Holter again. There is no Bjarki though, I guess he's already asleep. See, I guess... Talk to Jaka first. Did I get any stat boosters? Uh, no, I have the holy symbol though, but I don't have anyone with bad luck. That would really need it, you know? Uh... What's with the towel, Jaka? Bit cold to go river dipping. <laughs> I stumbled across something a little interest something interesting, a little something interesting earlier. Oh, I found a secluded hot spring, a stone throw, a stone's throw from here. I'm gonna hop in for a bit. I might tell the others about it once I'm done. Oh, you always have enjoyed your privacy. Well, have fun with that. Don't you want to join me? Two's company, bod. Oh no, I know what this scene is. Yes, we're going. I'd rather jump in with Isla if I'm being honest. But since it's you, I'll make an exception this time. Alright, I'm honored and aroused by your concern. See you in 10 minutes. What a jester. Oh, that's so- oh, it's gonna be fucking gay. Oh, god. And here we are. Damn, this water feels nicer than I expected. It's perfect temperature. Indeed, I also, also see you brought your sword into the tub again. Looks like old habits die hard. Remember that incident a few years ago? The one with those tomaton spies? I always keep my sword by my side, even when I'm visiting an outhouse. I'd rather not get caught off guard. Seeing as you brought your lance, it looks like you're the same as me. That's right, bot. I always keep myself prepared. Perform a hundred thrusts every single day. Oh, can you stop with this dial? A clock? Come on. I love the dialogue in this game, but then I knew about this cutscene. I knew about this scene for a long time because it got, like, leaked. But, uh, yeah, that's, um... Ugh. Whatever. Still remember that time you speared three men all- <laughs> Oh god! Oh fucking hell. This, yeah, this is gonna be the gayest fucking scene of all time. It was an impressive sight. Speaking of which, how fair is your spearmanship of late? Is your technique as agile as it was during the rebellion? Naturally, I polished my own spear as I always have. Uh, 
Though it seems your sword can use some sharpening. I know you're still noble at heart. Want me to show you how to properly wear <laughs> Oh, what are your brothers for if not educating one another on how to handle their weapons? But I could teach you a thing or two if we spend some time practicing together. Ah, uh, nice. This conversation seems a little... Why are you sitting five feet away from me, Bod? As brothers, we should sit closer, don't you think? Ah, uh, I knew you'd make this weird. What can I say, Bod? You're an easy target. Yep, that was the gayest thing I've ever seen in my life. You. It is you. You're that damn thief. Give me Angvik's relic. Oh shit, it's the horse guy. You dare call me a horse? Insolent pocket filcher. Where is Angvik's relic? Give it back or suffer my wrath. Hey, calm down, buddy. I, uh, you won't believe this. The relic, it's... Where is it? Well, see, I was trying to leave through the woods. Yes, and? Well, this huge spider came out of nowhere. It ate me in one bite, along with that relic. No, you are lying. I swear on me, Mom. Cross my heart and hope to die. The spider laid an egg with me inside it. But the relic, it's gone, man. It went bye-bye. It's still inside the gutter that arachnid. Liar, you must be lying. The relic is pr priceless. It's a symbol of my masculine glory. I don't know what to tell you, bro, man. Can't remember the spider that ate me. They all look the same. But there's no way to get back your relic. No, it cannot be. Father, I have failed you. Sorry, man, if I knew what a cool guy you were, but I'd never have stolen the relic in the first place. I feel this is terrible. There's nothing we can do now. I'll dispatch a hunting party. We will search the feces of the driders until we find the relic. There's no longer any point in killing you. Tss. Well, that's a relief. Tss. Tss. Yeah, Sokka really thinks I lost such an awesome relic. Since they're so easy to fool, got you in my back pocket. Definitely find whatever mystical uses this baby has. Fucking buggy, man. Hello, Natalie. Are you doing all right? Yep. Yep. Why are you asking, bo big boss man? Oh, we just done. We just got done fighting through dozens of giant spiders. I thought you might be scared. Pff, nah, not a chance. Are you crazy, big boss man? How's a fella like me gonna be scared of some big bugs? Pff, shit. Oh my god. <laughs> shit. I done stun plenty of spiders every day. Ain't nothing to it. Well, I guess that's good. Your reaction is unexpected. Love spiders, boss. They're great at scaring pretty gals like Lily. Then when they need some comfort, I open up my arms and give them a hug. Looks like a charm every time. Gals can't help but fall from my gumption. Won't be long before I woo every last lassie in this year an army of yours. Seems you know what you like and what you're fighting for. I can respect that. Well, I hope someday I could be half as good as you at wooing the dames. I think you even got that princess batting her eyes at you all day. I heard her mumbling sweet nothings about you yesterday. Talking about Ilanda? Shucks, look at you pretending to be all oblivious and stuff. So if you don't already know, you're all she thinks about. You know, it's not polite to idly chatter about personal matters between your comrades. That being said, what'd you hear about her? What'd you hear mumbling? <laughs> you sly dog. Hey there, Barrett. Anything wrong? Usually you'd be making a stew. I'm not really in a cooking mood, Mr. Bodyman. You bunched me last ma this map. I want to kill spiders to make spider stew. Uh, I think it's for the best of everyone if no one ate that. You're seeing those striders in the cave, I'm a bit. Striders? You mean the half-human, half-spider monsters, right? I'm surprised you hadn't heard about them until today. I never paid much attention to the different monster types growing up. I wasn't interested in my studies. In Viking culture, striders are fallen deities, the cursed fusions of witches and Lucifer's servants. Lucifer is the demon emperor of the underworld, a cruel woman who maims the unworthy for all eternity. Finally, a woman I wouldn't dare bed. Sorry, bad joke. Don't mind me. Continue. Lucifer detests cowards. Vikings who die in battle earn a worthy death. But for those who die in peace, they will fall into her clutches and suffer. For a Viking, there is no worse fate than dying out the battle. Ah, uh, so seeing those driders must have given you quite the fright. Probably dredge up some unpleasant thoughts. You're feeling shaken. Yes, some people call us Vikings. Uh, some, people, some people call us Vikings superstitious. Fair enough, they're right. I fear Lucifer's crap, and I intend to enter Valhalla. What's Valhalla like? Valhalla is where the titans rest. It is a realm of honor and, ho and valor. Every viking wishes to go there. Of course, there is also the titan hall of kings, but mortals dare not cover such a holy resting place. Only the deities themselves may lay their hands to rest there. I would make, f I would make for a good viking. I dislike battle. Dying in my sleep sounds like a good way to go out. I thought you to be a great warrior, Mr. Bodyman. Are you a coward? I'll fight if I must, but I get no joy out of killing others. I fight only to protect my loved ones. Glory means little to me. 
I see, your foreign ways intrigue me, but I shall hold fast to my beliefs. I cannot imagine a, a life not led in the pursuit of honor. Didn't you abandon your kin when the fighting reached its peak? Aye, but Trim was honorless. There is no glory in killing those who cannot fight back. I seek the thrill of a worthy battle, not the plundering of innocence. In that respect, we aren't so different, Barrett. That was a nice conversation there. Some levity, and then, you know, oh, no, serious. I like that. I'm just gonna ignore that that scene with Jaka ever happened, so, uh, yeah. Hey, Coulter. Oh, what's that in your hand? A message I picked up from a thieves' ca a cache. I haven't had time to read it until now. Never heard of a thieves' cache before. Back when I was in the Thieves' Guild, we stashed messages around Andaran. Our locations are a secret, but I know all the usual hidey spots. Picked up a message before we left Silvermist. It's mostly basic info. Typical gossip related to the guild. How often are these caches updated? About once a month, Aubrey sends out her message boys to make the rounds. The lowest initiates. Initiates. Local pickpockets, not full guiders yet. Don't remember hearing you talk about Aubrey before. She's the leader of the guild. Blonde lady, sinister, ruthless. Rumor has it she sold her mom out for 50 gold when she was a kid. She's been focusing on expanding the guild's network and reach. I see, any interesting news in the cache? Most of it you wouldn't understand. Gossip about high-level assassins. I usually keep an eye out to see if maybe Randall will put a hit on you. Has he? What do you think? Fair enough, you'd have said you'd have, you'd have said something if you did. So I found out one of my childhood buddies is back on the prowl. Jesse. Jesse! It's a rogue higher up in the in the guild than me. Crazy skilled. He almost just has one big problem. And that would be? The guy's a total moron. His head's a sack of rocks. Talking to him is almost like talking to a wall. He says the dumbest crap if you ask him anything. And yet he became a high level gilder. It wasn't always a huge idiot. He just discovered red dust. Now he's addicted to the stuff. It ruins his brain it ruined his brain. Just sad. Dust has been devastating our people ever since the ever since the rebellion. Yeah. <sighs> oh my god, I made the joke. Uh, the breaking bad joke, and now he's addicted to fucking cocaine in this, so uh he's close enough. Well, not quite close. Uh, meth is a lot different. <laughs> yeah, Jesse used to be quite the smooth operator, but now... Psst. We got a chance, I'll introduce you to him, but don't expect much. Pick locks, but conversations... I'll avoid getting into politics with him. That would be for the best. Yeah, hey, Fred. What are you looking at, Fred? Ah, oh, Bodyman, come to pester me again. You don't want me to if you don't want me here I'll leave no it's fine I was just looking through some old documents today was the first day I've ever fought in terrorism live combat over my you didn't even fight them dude over my Academy had all sorts of training sessions for them I saved my notes for just this okay sort of occasion I wasn't aware of that you've trained in combating them a bit your father is always worried the terrorists might attack Andoran he, de he decreed that all night academies must prepare for the worst terrorists are much more durable than the average soldier you see they have no pain response. You can't in intimidate them into submission. They break their bones and burn their corpses to ash. Or cut off their heads. Some re reanimated skeletons won't stop even then. They can act without their heads, like a politician. <laughs> a joke. I didn't take you for the type. Oh, I always thought you had a lance stuck up your bum. There's nothing wrong with making some light humor. Studies show jokes can help people cope with trauma. Just like that, you ruined your own joke. This is why you don't have friends, Fred. <laughs> take offense to that, I have many friends. Oh yeah, name one. I have a friend named Alexander. He's a noble from Speargarden. Alexander, the lord of Speargarden. He's your cousin. He doesn't count. What? Cousins? Cousins can be friends. We attended the same academy. When was the last time you spoke to Alexander? In the academy? Right. I hope you can name some others. Of course I do. I am also close with Lady Victoria, Caroline, and Isabel. Converse with them informally on many occasions. I'll have you know. I, have no I had no idea you were friends with my cousin. Lady Isabella, of course. She's in Malthrex Night, Ca Night Academy, Captain. Outside of our duties, we have spoken countless times. I look up to her as an example of a, sh of a chivalrous knight of steel. I knew she was your superior officer, but I wasn't aware you two were close. Guess I don't know you all that well. Indeed, you have much to learn about me. So you're learning more about people we might run into later, I guess. More letters, old Sam. I always would think and quill. Ah, young master, despite my travels, I still have many duties to attend. I must respond to my house's concerns even while I undertake this mission. Therefore, I always maintain a correspondence with my family. How do you send letters while we're out in the wilderness? 
Haven't you noticed? I own a, tra a train delivery pigeon. It whisks my message off to an associate in Holtmeyer. Delivers them to my family and who and who's, whosoever else I require. Oh, I should pay more attention. Uh, I have another letter to send, but I shall have to wait. Cannot send any until my pigeon returns. Young master, do you have any letters you, ne you need send out? I can send them in your stead. I guarantee absolute secrecy. Oh, there's no need for any of that. Who, who would I write? Randall? Morty? And none capable of reading my handwriting would be worth the effort to pen them. I don't know if my father has passed away as, as of this morn. If he has, then Randall must surely be celebrating. I could pen Mortimer. I have no idea what I'd even say. We're only close compared to my relationship with Randall. Really do Morty and I speak. You have a few, you have few valuable relationships, young master. That notion troubles me. Everyone I care about is already here right now in this army. I don't need the other louts. Everyone you say? Suppose that includes the Lightbringer as well. Perhaps. What's it to you? She's a smart, beautiful woman. We share, ma we share many similarities in our noble upbringings. Broken families, unsafe homes, backstabbings and betrayals. Sort of I developed feelings for Princess Ilanda. Attacked those soldiers in silver mist and swept the woman out from under them. You are playing with dragon fire, Bodyman. Angering Timite's royalty may cost you. I don't approve of shielding her. F falling for a forbidden fruit is ill-advised. She's not a forbidden fruit, old Sam. She's a person like you and me. She's someone who suffered terribly due to no fault of her own. After all my family has done to hers, Phelan must try to mend the past. Doubtless, her appearance has nothing to do with your self-sacrificing stance. If this princess were more of a homely figure, you might not go to such lengths. Do I not speak the truth, young master? Even if that were true, what does that change? My feelings are what they are. How many times are we going to have this conversation, old Sam? I made my choice. I'll live with the consequences of that decision. Ah, right, and so will the rest of us, whether we wish to or not. Randall will not sit idly once he takes the throne. I'm not scared of Randall. He should be. Once Randall commands Steel's armies, he will hunt the woman like a dog. He cannot allow a living Lightbringer Royal to draw breath. She threatens his reign. If she were ever to bear a boy, he would become king under Andron's highest laws. Do not forget that people detest your father. They'll grow no fonder of Randall's reign. Once they learn of the princess's existence, they will demand she assume the throne. Show the people's hearts, and that is an event Randall must not allow to pass. Even so, your words don't change anything. If Randall comes, I'll strike him dead. I already toppled one king. I wouldn't mind adding another to my mantle. Another trophy to my mantle. Just to be young and full of confidence. I wish I had your optimism, I wish I had your optimism in my old age. Theodore. Bodymon, what do you want? Go away. Don't pester me. I don't want a loose arrow in my army. I'd like to resolve our grievances, if possible. Hmm. Come on, don't be a child. Yeah, can I depend on you to watch my back or not? We're about to walk into a potential ambush in enemy territory. If you dare care if you care about Isla, you do well to get a grip on your emotions. Her name is Lady Ilanda. Don't you worry about her safety. I'm here. I am all that she needs for protection. I've been shielding her from har from harm for years, from your family. It's again. So, can I, so I can't rely on you after. I'll assign you to the rear guard if necessary. The last thing I need is you slinging a fireball on me when the Tomatons show up. Ah, tempting. Don't give, me any, don't give me any ideas. I'm a professional soldier. My sense of propriety is excellent. Unlike he who pursues that which does not belong to him. Boy, you're a real creep. Never mind, forget I said anything. Just stay out of my way when the fighting starts. I wouldn't want to screw up and smack you by accident. Are you done speaking yet? Be gone already. Your face makes me angry. Feelings mutual. God damn. So talk to these two right now. Garam first. Garam, what are you doing there up there on that ledge? Hello, two legs, Bodiman. I am observing the area. As a hunter, I must keep on the watch for enemies. I also like to search for prey, so as to feed myself. Do not wish to become a burden for your cooks. I'm surprised you can even climb such a steep peak. Isn't climbing with hooves kind of difficult? If you have never witnessed the, majest the majesty of a mountain goat, my cloven hooves allow me to traverse the ridges with ease. I see, I've always had some interest in centaur culture. Fortunately, your people are a bit reclusive, hidden away. It's difficult to find someone willing to answer my questions. We have had poor dealings with many two legs in the past. Your kind is always looking to exploit ours, or enslave us. We hold no protections under your laws. So long as this is true, we will continue to keep to ourselves. That being said, you may ask me questions if you wish. I'll answer them if I can. That's great. I always wondered, do centaurs refer to hunt, hunt in packs? Or do, you pursue, or do you pursue prey by yourselves? Depends on who our quarry is. The law of glory always applies. There's no glory in ganging up on a single isolated enemy. 
However, if they are quite large, two or three of us may join hands. In the case of an enemy army, we will keep our numbers one to one. One centaur to each enemy. Only in this way will Angvik bless our, bless our hunt. You seem just fine without numbering my company. Only because that thief stole our sacred relic. Otherwise, we would not stoop to such a level. What do you steal anyway? A spirit crystal, which once belonged to our great god Angvik himself. Oh, sounds oppressive. Does it have any special uses? Indeed, it makes for a potent centaur aphrodisiac. Females of my species should long to mate with its holder. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> well, uh, that sucks for Buggy. Well, who cares? He's kind of deserved. He's gonna have to deal with uh, centaur chicks going after him, I guess. Angelus, thank you for the help. Hmm, the help? Hmm, the help. That's right, you convinced your sister to let us into the caves. Chiaka seemed like he was about to blow a stack at her. You saved us a lot of trouble. Oh, uh, 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 oh, body man, my bestest of friends. Or you not, for I'm not your, for I'm at your service, as always. My sister is eccentric, but quite reasonable. She's a bit obsessive in regards to her work, but she means well. What research was she doing in those caves anyway? Don't tell me she was trying to romance the terrors. Ha, ah, funny jest. No, my sister has grand ambitions. She intends to combine the bodies of human and monster. Something about uplifting our, uplifting our species to the apex. Oh, so she intends to merge human and terror bi biology. It sounds a little... She certainly has her critics, but she also has her financiers. Her work is quite promising. Financiers, someone is paying for her research, but who? You and I would both like to know. Even Amelia is not fully certain. He addresses himself in letters as Mr. Inquisitive. We suspect he's some aristocrat from another house, but we can't be sure. They've never met him in person. Afraid not, he sends her the bunny through a courier. Amelia puts the funds to, to use through her lab laboratories. Just all sorts of top-of-the-line equipment. I'm not certain what half of those our devices do. Lightbringers are still in power. This is might Amelia dead. You should watch out, Angelus. Meddling with humans and terrors, the divines will surely curse her. Hmm, I've tried to convince her to stop, but she won't listen to reason. Sister Amelia is quite hard-headed. She's similar to you in that regard. I'll be careful. This Mr. Inquisitive worries me. God always comes with strings attached. Gold always comes with strings attached. But keep your concerns in mind. So no other small events happening. Just, just the talks. The last two talks. Oh yeah, it's you. What do you want? I might have to work for you, but I don't have to talk to you. Just making sure you aren't pilfering behind my back. You're not sneaking around, are you? No shifty business. Sneaking? No, sir. I'm a man of honor, off you know. I steal in broad daylight. <laughs> yes, honorable. I see. I have my eye on you. Now, if you excuse me... No, wait, before you go, I just have to ask, boss. Yes? Why is everyone at this camp so stinking straight-laced? All you guys do is sit around like a bunch of lazy bums. Where's your fun? Where's your spirit? Ain't there supposed to be an army of dirty mercenaries? I have no idea what you're talking about. That prissy brown with the blonde hair, she just sits and mumbles about poetry. That horse grandpa, he does nothing but write fancy letters all day long. I try training these losers up, but no one has a lick of fun in their bones. Let's say you may play again. Let's throw some dice and wager some gold. You want to gamble gold? No, so what else will we gamble? Come on, it'll be fun. I always throw dice when I, I always throw dice when I'm bored. Don't tell me the same as the rest of these sour pusses. Actually, I'm a bit of a gambler myself. I love money, booze, and women alike. I'm down to throw some dice. The rules? Sure, you're not some stuck-up noble after all. Now you're talking my language. Wait, listen up. These are buggy super special house rules. I'm gambling with them. I have a safe state though. But I'm making it about gold from his army coffers. If he wins, he'll get twice the gold back that he bet. His odds are based on his luck. The higher it is, the better his odds. However, temporal manipulations and distortions won't affect the outcome, so there's no point in cheating. Which is only good as a man's honor. Even a scoundrel like Bodymon knows this much. I'll try this wager. Alright, let's go, and then... Wait, if I could do that... Let's see if I can do this. Hang on. I want to see which one's the highest one to get. Oh, 250. Okay, so 250 so far. 500. Okay, so 500. There we go. For another round, well, no. 
you have better things to do than gamble. Maybe another time, Buggy. Whatever, come and find me if you change your mind. I can gamble with him to get extra gold, but... I feel like I'm fine right now. Oh, you're still here? I beg your pardon? I thought you were going to return to the caves. But you're still here in my army. With us. Yes, I decided to stick around. But why? Weren't you going to research the cave monsters? It was just coming all shapes and sizes, you know. That doesn't follow. What if, human what if humans were the real monsters all along? You butchered those cute riders so easily. Are you sticking around because my army's filled with monsters? No, that would be ridiculous. Okay, so your reason is... I just happen to be going this way. It's safer to travel in a group. You happen to be going in Tiamat's general direction. Yes, exactly. Toward the land of Andoran's enemy. That's right. Okay, but why? Dragons are monsters, in a certain way. They're half-human hybrids, too. The only difference is they can speak. Triders cannot. Demi humans are not the same as monsters. My degree says otherwise. I know more than you. Never mind. Fucking hell. So tempted to use a silver blade. A silver blade, fuck. It has 80 hit now? It has 80 hit. So good thing to keep in mind then. Seems like everyone's getting along fine after the caves. Guess I'll head to bed then. If only Isla would join me. <laughs> what a day. Party man. Isla? Don't you know to knock before entering? It's a tent bot. There's no nothing to knock on. I that's fair. So did you need something? Oh, no, not particularly. I just wanted to talk with you. I really enjoy our chats. If my appearance distresses you, I can always leave. No, no, by all means, feel free to stay. Anything on your mind? I've seen you wandering the camp talking to people. You show a surprising level of concern for your people. You see Barnches an army of grunts fighting for my gold. They're all friends of mine. Mostly ones I've known for over five years. We've gone through a lot together. I wish I visit them, keep up their morale, and maintain our familiar bonds. Last thing I want is for my men to have traumatic breakdowns. Has that happened before? Yes, many times. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to poke at a sensitive subject. In the past, I wasn't always the most reliable leader. I lost a lot of good friends during the, uh, Light the Lightbringer War. There were a lot of preventable deaths under my watch. That must weigh on your conscience. I doubt I'd make a good leader. I'd be too anxious and worrying myself sick over everyone. Don't sell yourself short, Isla. You won't know until you try. Mistakes make the boy a man, as the old saying goes. I screwed up plenty of times, but I also gained a lot of experience. What do you think of your father's rule? That's an interesting topic, Pivot. Seems he's been on your mind. I turn this question around. What do you think my opinion is? You don't seem to like talking about him. I imagine you, dis you disapprove of his way of ruling. Yes, but I can't relate to the troubles my father has endured over the years. Currently has at random guesses as to the political fires he's had to put out. Thorgrim isn't in good health. When he dies, will you? Nope, Randall is first in line for the throne. Then me, then Morty. Neither Morty and I have much of a desire to rule the common folk. I care more about my people. Morty likes to bury his nose in books. Like the two of us, Randall pangs for it in the worst way possible. You know this, yet you don't seem to want to prevent his rise. Why not? I think you'd make for a, far, for a far better king than Randall. It's not my place. But if you don't intervene, then countless innocents will suffer. It's not that simple, Isla. I wish it was, but it isn't. I care about my people. I want to protect them. The blood of the common folk pains me, but I'm no god. I can't save every suffering villager, every poor sod. But life is far from a fairy tale. Thousands died to the plague. My father couldn't do anything to protect their lives. Even if I take the throne from my brother, I won't save everyone. You can shield some of them, enough to count. Randall may come for your head. If he does, I will protect you. Protecting you and the others is my most important goal. Might be selfish of me, but I must act according to my heart. I see. Well, in that case, I offer my thanks, Bod. No, there's no need for you to thank me. This is the least I can do for you. But most importantly, it's something I want to do for you. Howdy, man. Nice. And I think it's actually a good thing to end off. Got time to end off here. Got 34 minutes and we can like do the preparations and the story before the next chapters. I don't know how long it's going to end up being. So yeah, an interesting little last episode was when we had pretty much finished the map. This was just us fighting the boss. Yeah, definitely... I'm having a lot of fun with this game. The, the, the last map is pretty difficult, which I'm happy about that. 
into something a bit more difficult soon and now holy shit the silver blade I'm surprised this is actually good so I'm gonna try using it soon in any case that's gonna be it for this episode so next time on Underon Talk we're gonna be heading into chapter 7 from what I hear is also pretty difficult so let's see how good that challenge ends up being see you guys then take care